In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Blessed feast of the Theophany, everyone. So just to share a few things, one thing that stands out about this feast is that we read like this in the Synexarium, that Christ has established for us the gate to the kingdom. And we talk about, we'll see, we'll read in the Synexarium that baptism is the beginning of the sacraments, the start of all the sacraments. This is the gate to the kingdom. So it's a pretty significant thing to say this. One thing we need to understand when they were asking, when we were just reading in the gospel, they were asking St. John the Baptist, who are you? And, and then they asked him, he said, I am not the Christ. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not Christ? Why then do you baptize if you are not Christ? So he said to them, John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I shall not loosen. And then later on he said, he will be baptizing in another account, baptizing by water and fire or water and spirit. And he also said, he shall baptize you by water and spirit. So the baptism in the understanding of the church, in the Orthodox church, who is baptizing? This is key. This is a key differentiator so that we understand who is baptizing right here in the baptism when someone gets baptized. Who is baptizing this person? Christ. Jesus Christ himself is baptizing. The priest is just a tool. Who is, who is performing all these sacraments? Christ himself. Not, not, nothing has to do with the person standing. It is Christ himself using the person's hands, the person's voice to perform the sacraments. He is the high priest. That's why we, every time we talk about priesthood, we say the priesthood of Christ. So there's a big difference here where we talk about, they're asking him, why you're baptizing, why are you baptizing? He said, I'm baptizing with water. That's all I'm doing for the repentance, just for repentance. But Christ will come and he will baptize with the water and the spirit. The person who is baptizing is Jesus Christ himself. So he has established this for us by being himself baptized and established this sacrament for us in order to be a gate for heaven. What does that mean for the baptism to be a gate to heaven? What happens during baptism? We know that there are two sacraments, well, three if you do, if you count communion, but two sacraments happen one right after the other. We know this, there is baptism, there is chrismation. The baptism is the, is the being um, in, in like the baptism by the, the water and the spirit. And then chrismation is the seal of the Holy Spirit where the spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of me. So these are two sacraments. So to understand the baptism, what we do, we say we participate in the death and the resurrection of Christ. So through Christ's blessing of this water, we participate in the death of the resurrection. What, what, is, what is the point of this? So that we can attain, we say we put on Christ. When we are baptized, we put on Christ. What does that mean? Our nature changes, right? It's a new birth. We talk about that too. When we say we put on Christ, he has given, given us the ability or the resurrected nature of Christ because we participated in his death and resurrection. So this is not a small thing. 
He gave us the body, the, the resurrected nature, so that we can overcome death. That's why it's called the, the gate to the eternal kingdom. Because we participate in the death and resurrection of Christ, and we put on Christ's resurrected nature. Resurrected nature. The chrismation is then when we receive the Holy Spirit inside of us. The comforter. So this is what Christ is doing. And I say doing because he's continuing to do this with every one of us, even till today through the sacraments. His work is still going on. What Christ is doing is he's giving us all these things. He's giving us his resurrected nature. He, he's giving us you know, th this ability to overcome death. There remains something we need to consider. Can I sin after being baptized? This is a rhetorical question. But the idea is what? Yes, we can sin because we cannot forget that God has created us in His image from the beginning. What does that mean? He created us in His image. Is God free or not free? He is free. He has free will. We are created in His image with free will. So I can choose not to follow Christ or I can choose to, I can choose death because sin, I'm not sinning, I'm not offending God and that's why I, I will die, you know, I would die eternally. That's not about offending God at all. God is not offended by that. In our in existentially, sin leads to death. Existentially. That's why Adam and Eve fell. It's not because it's a punishment. It's because it's a, just, if you drink poison, it will lead to death. That's, that's what it is. If you move away from life, then that is death. death. So if you move away from Christ, that is death. So we have this free will of choosing. He has given us the ability to trample death. Before that, we didn't have that ability. Before the baptism, we didn't have the ability. That's why this is a major feast, is that we are celebrating that he gave us the resurrected nature and be able to overcome death if we want it. So when we say in the baptism, we put on Christ, we read this in the, um, in the Paramun uh, this morning, in the Paramun Synexarium. I'll read it, this a small uh, passage. So we read at the very end of the Paramun Synexarium, which is talking again about the Feast of the Theophany. We entreat our good Savior to accept our fasts and purify us from our sins and make us worthy of manifesting his glory with our deeds as he manifested it in the Jordan River. So make us worthy of manifesting his glory by our, with our deeds as he manifested it at the Jordan River. So we actually have the ability to manifest God's glory. Do we understand that? So do we realize that? We have the ability to manifest God's glory through our life. One of the church fathers, I believe it's Saint Basil, if I'm not mistaken, um, says the glory of God is man fully alive. Man as in human. The glory of God is man fully alive fully alive. So when we say we put on Christ, this is our calling. We are called to show the glory of God through our deeds. Just as he was manifested today, we, we, the feast is called Theophany or the, the revealing of God. The revealing of God. That's the name of the feast or Epiphany. The revealing. Because he showed as the voice, the Father, 
and the Son and the, and the Spirit as the dove. God revealed himself to us. And this revelation, this glory, is something we are called to as well through our deeds. And he has not give, live, left us also alone in that endeavor as well. Just so that we realize how God is actually trying to, to work with us. He's not just letting us... Um, sometimes we may subconsciously think that God has done all this for us as a favor, and now we are returning the favor by following him. No, he, he, he's, he hasn't stopped, actually, the favors. He hasn't stopped. He's still working. If we ask where God is today, he is knocking at the door. If we ask where he's today, well, he's, he's going to come and, and be with us in the liturgy. He is working with us. He gave us this, the Holy Spirit. So this is why this, uh, this passage from the Synexarium this morning was interesting to read that he, our good Savior, may accept our fast to purify us from our, and to purify us from our sins through his work with us in the sacraments, his work in our spiritual lives, and make us worthy of manifesting his glory, just as he manifested it at the Jordan River. We pray that God help us in this, that we always remember that we have, once we have put on Christ, we have the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. God will not tempt us, or God does not tempt by evil, but God will not allow a temptation if we, if we do not have the ability to overcome it. We have to know that, as we just read in the in liturgy as well. So may God give us this grace and uh, allow us to always see his works that are among us through all the sacraments and all our life in the church and bless his name and glorify his name through our works. Glory be to God forever. Amen.